So this this the word of God is to save you. The Messiah himself told you that the truth will set you free and people have uh, misconstrued what that means grossly. And the warning in the last days is to come out of her, my people. That's the warning. And why in the world would he say something like that? Because in the last days, his people are going to turn their ears from hearing the gospel. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but it's the truth. The Bible tells you, but the people in the church are not going to read the Bible. They're going to, even though they can see the sin exploding in the world, they are filled with cognitive dissonance. They don't want to hear it. They go, la, 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 la. They plug their ears and they heap to themselves teachers that itch their, itch their ears. That's what is going to happen because they're not willing to deal with it. A servant will go out and teach the gospel and you do not see your average Christian is not going out there and even teaching what their church is teaching. Now, this might be disturbing what I'm going to tell you. And I'm not going to make no railing accusation, uh, accusations against those who are ruling over us. But I'm going to warn the church about what they're doing so that you understand um, what God already pre predestined for this generation. Now, I've said it, and it's it's been an ongoing thing because more and more things get brought to my <clears throat> not that I didn't already know it existed. It was one of the first things that the, the Lord was showing me as I was waking up myself. He asked me to be a watchman, and a watchman's job is to warn the people. Okay? Plain and simple. Warn the people, but it says that the people will not listen. They will not hearken because they are stiff-necked. But warn them anyways, and those who hear will hear, and those who will not will not. The Messiah is saying the same thing. And he sends forth his servants. If you even give them a cup of water, then you will receive the same reward. But if you don't, then, then you won't. You know, there's, there's warnings. And they don't, they do not, they are not comfortable. God is not happy with us. I'm not sitting here tickling your ears. But the, here's what the Messiah says in John 10 about the second sheepfold. Second sheepfold. There's another sheepfold. It's all prophecy. Those of you who don't understand prophecy, the church goes apostate and then the elect rise up. Okay? That's the way the story goes. And then the elect, they go and save a bunch of Gentiles and they bring them to the Lord in a clean vessel and everybody's tears are wiped away and the kingdom uh, goes on with the Messiah reigning over us for a thousand years. Hallelujah. That's the story. That part of it. But there's a whole bunch of details in between and it ain't going to get prettier. Okay? Right now, as sin is increasing and increasing, he recompenses the sins under the third and fourth generation of those who hate him. His people were never supposed to fall for the trap. Okay? Throughout is it, the, the Israelite history, these kings and, 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 and whatever, these, the people would always be, by the leaders, would be influenced to do, go and learn the ways of the, the heathen, those who surround them and not follow God's way. The peculiar people always kept the covenant and the Messiah came to refresh the covenant until the time of restitution of all things, which is about to take place to those who have ears to hear. So he says, Verily I say unto you, I am the, the door of the sheep. The door, okay? The gate. All, all through the Old Testament, they hate those who rebuke in the gate. It's rebuke, okay? Now, listen to this. And all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Okay? The context of even with the good, the good Samaritan. The robbers robbed that man of righteous judgment and the good Samaritan gave him the oil and the wine. <clears throat> that is the word of God and the Holy Spirit. But the sheep did not hear them. Okay? The sheep are not going to hear the thieves and the robbers. That's a good sign. I am the door. By me, if any man enter, enter in, shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. What did Messiah say about those who couldn't hear him? 
You are of your father, the devil, a murderer, a liar and a murderer. When people lie to other people, it, it, they are a murderer because they're not giving them the truth. They're not feeding them the true word of God. I'm going to give you some examples of this because the way it works in the body of Christ, in the body of Messiah, is that your brothers and sisters, even if they don't even understand what they're doing to me right now, I keep getting, and I don't watch people's videos, but they're sending me things, various different people are sending me things, and they happen to all be the same, all line up, and it's pricking my heart about what God is even talking to me about in the Bible at the same time, and there's no such thing as a coincidence, okay? And it's stuff they're sending me is stuff I already know, but it's all lining up to what God is showing me in the scriptures, and the sword is coming. It's already, it's already here, and it's already destroying the church. And like the Bible says, the people in the church are not going to listen. Except for some. The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and, to, and destroy. I come that they may have life and that they might have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Okay? And his servants give their life for the sheep as well. Because they, they, they become servants. They walk as he walked. They do what he does. But he that is a hireling, so that's your pastor Bob right there. He who is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own sheep are, are not, seeth the wolf coming. Here's the wolf coming. The sword is coming. And leaves the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Now, that's talking about Jeremiah 23. Woe to the shepherds. In the last days, you will consider this perfectly. Everybody who hears this, go and read Jeremiah 23. There's a bunch of warnings in there. The hireling fleeth. I think that's Ezekiel chapter 34. That's the other thing. Go and look at what Ezekiel 33 and 34 says. It starts off with the watchman, and then 34 tells you what they're going to do. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep. Okay? All he's telling you there is they're afraid and they won't tell the people in the end days church, and I'll prove it to you right in the next, as soon as I flip this page over. They do not care about the sheep. They're scared. They're intimidated by what's even in the church right now. Okay? As the Father know me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. If you guys can't hear this, I feel terribly afraid for you. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Okay? That's Ezekiel 37 even. But it's all over. But just, that's a good place. Hear my voice and go and read the word of God. Take the warning. God sent his son to save your life and give you the words of eternal life. He was warning you. He was, the, a fool despises prophecy. That's what our Messiah was doing. And he laid his life down. He died for all the sins that you did so that you could enter into the covenant and receive the Holy Spirit of truth and be saved. And the truth means you're going to obey him. All right. And it's through his spirit that you will obey. Not of yourself. It's a gift of God. Grace and truth came through the Messiah. The law came through Moses. Grace and truth through the Messiah. The law is what you need to understand, which doesn't mean what a lot of people are doing. Going to the right. Going to the circumcision. That is what he gave up. He ended that sacrificial law. It's done. Because it... He became the sacrifice for our, our sins, okay? What he did was refresh the Holy Covenant. And it tells you that the men who are wise in the last days are going to bring people back to the covenant and that the Antichrist is going to gain intelligence with those who forsake the Holy Covenant. And it will not be unsealed until the last days. Come on, you guys. Open your, circumcise the foreskin of your heart. This is what we're supposed to do. And the whole church is deceived. And the reason why it's deceived is very disturbing. But it is the truth. And the Bible told us. The Bible told us. 
the wolf comes and the hirelings, which are these pastors, they're not going to get away with this. There's a big woe to them and they're going to get punished for not telling the truth. I'll read it again. And the others and other sheep I have, which are not of this full and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Even Yeshua was called the servant in the Old Testament as well. And this is what he does. And he has the spirit of his father without measure to tell the truth. He spoke in parables. He spoke in parables for a reason because the people who really, really, really want to know what he has to say will study the word of God and they will find out what he's even quoting and talking about. And he warns the people that I speak in parables because they're not listening. That's why. All right. And that's why the whole church, it tells you the whole church will be deceived in the last days. It says many are going to come in my authority. They're going to say that I'm the Messiah, but they're going to deceive many. Now I'm going to get into some stuff that I've been shown and reminded of, of, of the past, but even things I just, I plunked on a, a video about, there's a bunch of these things out there. They're different. We'll call them clubs. Okay. But they're all united. And they're all united under what the Bible says was, is going to happen. He's going to raise up. Romans 13 is a good example of this. This is why we don't speak evil of them. We don't rebuke them at all. We don't accuse them. They confess what they're doing even for crying out loud. So you can go on, and go on your YouTube and listen to, you know, certain different lodges and stuff like that. And go listen to what they even say. They will explain what they're even all about. Now, some of these, they're all different. They all come in different names, but they're all united under the, the higher up, the, the way up at the top type people. Okay? And their job is to destroy the church. Okay? So they've been involved in this for a long time. Some of them that are even in... In the, in the church organization that are, that are running these things, they have vows that line up with even what the Chaldeans are saying about dashing the children to pieces, not, not sparing even old people or, or a women or nothing like that. It's in their vows. They're quoting things in the Old Testament about the Chaldeans, the bitter and hasty nation. It's unbelievable. I'll get into it in other places as well. Uh, you you that know any of the brothers, we do a Zoom call on the Sabbath morning. You might want to get involved in that because there's probably way more details. We'll speak more freely in there and, 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 um, and whatever. But I'm going to tell you some of the things I even listen to. You can go and look up what even Freemasons say about their own selves. Now, in order to be, become one of them, you must... Half, you must do it on your own account. They don't re try to rec recruit. This is out of their own mouth. You know, whether this, I'm sure the guy was lying about a ton of things. You don't believe everything they're saying, but they're letting you know they were doing a seminar on how to become one of them. You have to do it on your own free will and you must be spiritually minded. But at the same time, they will never, they never in their own club, never, this is what they said. They will never um, impose or talk about the religious beliefs, okay? But what they will do and what they're part of their um, tact is that they, they join whatever the popular religion is. So you now you got these guys and they can have any kind of faith. It, it can even be Satanism, all right? It can be... It can be anything. That's, that's, the, that's actually a prerequisite, that they can be any kind of religion, join this club, but that they join the, the popular religion of, of the land that they're in to create their own harmony. And what they're doing is just infiltrating churches with their own doctrine. And that doctrine is don't correct anybody. 
So now you understand why nobody's rebuking anybody in the church because they're all in that church. Those are the wolves. And the hireling sees the wolf, but he, won't, he doesn't care about the sheep because he's just a hireling. Okay? So when you see the hireling and the wolves, that's talking about Pastor Bob and all these organized um, cults, all right, which are also prophesied to take place in the last days. This is what's going to happen. All right, so they're teaching. That's why you got all these 50,000 denominations. But God is not blaming them. No. God is giving them the occasion to do this because his people will not obey the, the Ten Commandments. And that's how it's going to end. So you have to be wise. That's why he says, come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. And this is the great whore. And it works the, the ones that are in your church are at the bottom of the totem pole for the most part. They're at the bottom of the totem pole, but they're doing what they're told to do because it's a pyramid, all right? Look at your dollar bill. You're going to get, you guys are in Egypt. You're being oppressed. That's the, the spiritual oppression within the church. So come out of her, my people. Set, let my people go, right? There's going to be a second exodus and these guys are going to raise up they have vowed in different sects of the same unit have vowed that if any heretics come up, they're going to, they're not going to spare them. They will give their lives for this cause. They will dat in the, in the name of Jesus or Jesus. They do this in the name of Jesus. All right. This is what they're going to do. That's their vow. That is, that is incredible that these things aren't even known. The, 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 the deceit and the lies is, is just remarkable. There's a church, and I think it's called the Church of, the Worldwide Church of God is another thing that I'm going to bring up. Then they do, I think it's them. Um, regardless, it, they, they, are, they talk about some of the, the depths of what, what uh, we talk about in, in, the, in, in uh, my circle of, of friends and brothers and sisters or whatever, like the key of David, for instance. So you can go look this stuff up. One of my sisters sent me this video last, last week. And I just, I, you know, I have already seen that, that type of video, that same guy. And, but I watched, started watching it again this morning and they're trying to explain the key of David, for instance, and what they, they see so much about, they know it's, the only the servants will receive the key of David. They see that, okay? But what they're doing is they're putting their self in that position and they're telling you that the key of David is actually preaching the gospel, all right? But they don't know what the key of David is. So the key of David is hidden in the scriptures. They know that. And they know that nobody can, not everybody's going to hear it, only the elect. They know this, but they claim the elect because they really don't have the key of David because the key of David is a fast and it's a fast that's written through the scriptures and you can go watch my videos about the key of David but even they know I'm t my point is that they know it's in there they're searching they claim that they're so wise and that other people aren't going to see it because and then they're, they're laying the claim that they are the true church obviously that's what they're going to do yet they don't tell you what the key of David is they tell you that it's actually doing the work that's the key of David. And that's not the key of David. The key of David is given to those who do the work. And it's given by God. God opens people's eyes to see it in the scriptures. And we pass it forward. But if you, there's guys that I've given the key of David to myself who had it. And they received it in their heart. But they wouldn't do the work. And then instead they turned back to the ways of Ephraim, which is the drunkards of Ephraim, which is a prophecy to the servants that they will do this. That If the Bible says that they're going to do it, then they're going to do it. I witnessed it. I have to witness it. I have to witness it because it actually increases my faith that the Bible is true. It breaks my heart. I hate seeing it because I love those men. But all they do is blaspheme now. And they did the same thing to Paul. So Paul gave them up to the devil so they, would, so they would learn not to blaspheme. That's what happens. If it happened to Paul, he was a man born before his time because he's actually showing you that the watchmen are going to rise up in the last days. That's why he went into the synagogue 
and he rebuked his own brethren for three Sabbaths in a row, and then he washed his hands and said, your blood be on your own head. That's watchman talk, because you're supposed to do that. A watchman is supposed to go and warn. That is a servant. The sword is coming. So how is it coming? Through all the prophecy about the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, okay? That's what's going on right now. The Chaldeans are in Babylon. They're going off the Babylonian ways. So they're going to tell, that's why you have doctrine in your church, not to rebuke people to follow the Holy Covenant, because in their own organizations, they hush that. Nope, don't talk about religion. Just be nice and help the people out. Have a circus or, or two, you know, be charitable. Show yourself to be leaders. That's the whole thing. That's what they're doing. They're, they're luring people in with these, they, oh, these guys must be great. They're being, they're helping this organization out and they're building this church and they're building that and they're building this and they're, they're laying the cornerstone and all these different things to show themselves to be pleasing unto men. But deep down inside, you go to the testimonies of some of the people who have gotten out of the children. They're out there. The testimonies, you can click on your YouTube and, and look at what these children had to go through. And that's, they, they go through these things because they're in a, a sorority, you know? So when you're in something like that and you start taking vows, they reassure that you won't break that vow by causing you to do things that will destroy you. If, it's, if you break their vow, then they're going to destroy you because they have information against you that you did. And that's how it works. So they get you to work that way. And then they'll send you into all different types of fields to do their work, to build their empire. And they're destroying the church right now. There's a guy named John Todd. He's dead, right? Came out in the 50s or the 60s ex ex explaining to churches that would not hear, just like this, they would not hear his warning. And he came out of the, the Illuminati. And you can see his videos are still on YouTube. They are going to proclaim these things. And that's the whole point. They're, the whole point is that they proclaim them. They have to tell you the truth and what they're doing, but they know you're not going to believe them, believe, because they're sitting there. That's where the word or the phrase conspiracy theory came up to cause that confusion, that division. Because it's true that they're doing these things, but then they create that kind of a thing to cause question to come into your head and you'll say, no, nah, that can't be. You know, like, like right now, people will watch this video and say, oh, my church isn't like that. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, it is. Everybody's church is infiltrated by this system because everybody's church is not keeping the, the Holy Covenant. And that's why your pastors will not, they are already under that rule. They go, put it this way, the same people own the schools and everything like that. They own the seminaries where the pastors are going to go. And they teach their own gospel and their own doctrine and they infiltrate that way. So they, they send forth their, their pack of wolves to all different organizations, whether it be your military, whether it be your school system, whether it be the government and all these things. It's, it's all part of their plan. And that's what we were warned about, O Ephraim, the most powerful nation, a multitude of people, a multitude a multitude of different nations within a nation. That's, that's what's the prophecy about Ephraim, the most powerful nation in the last days, and it's going into the pit, and the pit is hell. That's why there's warnings about it, and that's why the people in the church are not reading their Bibles, because if they were, they would know this stuff. But they're not. They despise prophecy. They want to hear ear-tickling words, and it's just egg on their face. But God says, I'm going to raise up watchmen. They're going to tell the truth anyway. And that they're covered. And that they're not supposed to be evil and keep their mouth shut. They're supposed to proclaim what's the sword is coming and that you are, are to repent. And that those who repent, God will protect. But look at how few are going to ever do it. Well, the, the church is not going to understand the book of Revelation at all. And even the churches that are fascinated with it, there are. But they get it all wrong. And what are they doing? Look at the last page. Anybody who takes ads or takes away from the prophecies of this book, 
He will be taken out of the, that's a big warning. I take it to heart myself. I, it, the fear of God is in me on that. You know, that's why I don't say too much about things I don't know about. It's not been revealed to me yet. I don't really want to know nothing about the trumpets anyways. I do know about the seven seals. You know, I do know things about the trumpets and whatever, but I don't get into, into those prophecies. And here's the problem, even with book of revelation. And here's the, here's the problem with the church. When they start talking about these churches that are talking about Revelation, it's quoting over 600 chapters in the Old Testament and, and the New Testament too, probably. But that's how many, when you put, because the, it's just, it keeps repeating itself, all these things. And this book is written in such a way that the sheep can hear it. The sheep hear his voice. I'm a sheep, okay? I'm a sheep. I'm, a, I'm one of God's children because I'm, because he's shown me I'm one of his children because I can hear the word of God. And it's my job. I would be doing a huge sin if I didn't repeat what he shows me. And he shows me a lot of stuff. He shows me my enemies every single time they rise up against me. He shows the brothers that are going to stab, stab me in the back he, because they're, not, they're afraid. The big thing about the servants that rise up that fall is because they're afraid to tell the truth to people. That's what it is. And their hearts go after their covetousness. And it has to happen. And it verifies the God, word of God. It's just very heartbreaking. You know? They, they, you, the, the, the prophecy about the watchman is, is um, something that a lot of people are not going to pay attention to. It's obvious by their behavior. They sit and gossip about you. Tells you they're going to do that. They... They uh, hear what you're saying, but they won't do what you're saying. That's what it says. And it says because they're stiff-necked people. And that's what's going to go on. The Bible is not going to lie to you. And there's, you know, there's got to be other guys that are doing the same thing as me. I know I'm raising up guys to do the same thing as me. I'm hoping that all of you guys are doing the same thing as me. It doesn't have to be on the YouTube, but it would be good. I mean, once he says that... When they show brotherly love, which is rebuking, then the world will know who you are. So if they're all doing it, and that means that they're all doing it together, then the world will know who you are. That's what the Messiah said. Brotherly love is rebuking so that you don't suffer the consequences of sin. That's not what the churches are teaching anymore, okay? And that's why, and here's some examples I'm trying to get on the table. What I'm trying to tell you guys ultimately is go and start learning about what's running this world. Go and start learning about these little organizations and, and, and uh, go look at, go watch a video uh, about like Freemasonry and stuff like that. And, and listen to what they say they are doing and what their goal is and what their plan is, their philosophy and listen to what they're saying. They're not going to tell you all the truths of what's really going on in there. And they, but you'll catch on to information. You'll see that other people who have been involved in it, they get, they, uh, they get out of that. You know, certain children, you know, there's, I watched a, a video, a lady was telling the story about what she went through her whole entire life. And, you know, she was raped many times. I, I mean, even in my own life, I dated a girl before I, before I had um, at all converted, I dated this girl and she was, tell and she was uh, involved in the Shriners. I didn't know nothing about it. That's the circus, right? The Shriners circus we have here in, in Canada. And that's how they fundraise and do these things and show themselves to be community members and all that stuff. But when I was, I would sit there and talk to this woman and um, she would tell me how evil they are and I can only imagine what she was talking about because I didn't last very long with her because there was something seriously um, emotionally wrong with this person. But she told me a few things and it, it's not, you know, what they do in secret, it, you know, it's, it's not good. And um, I mean, you even hear that in, I think, in Ephesians. Look what it says in Ephesians. Like, it, it's a shame to even mention what they do in secret. But you're supposed to expose these things. And when you have the Holy Spirit of truth, you're literally commanded to do this. 
And we are, the information is going to be out there for people to see. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as the children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. Goodness is his law. Knowing it. His ways. Okay? And righteousness. Truth. Proving what is acceptable unto God. What's acceptable unto him and what is not acceptable unto him. And I and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. In secret. Secret societies are in your church. And they aren't just sitting in the back pew, minding their own business. They're getting in there, but they're doing it with a big fat smile on their face, and they're totally deceiving. You know, churches don't get deceived by... Um, somebody coming in there and shouting repentance. They don't want to hear repentance, so it's easy to push that off. They get deceived by smooth ear tickling words. And those smooth ear tickling words are saying, don't rebuke, be gentle. Be gentle. And that's what it comes. That's, that's their own philosophy. Aside from, they come in and they don't, in their own societies, they don't even want to talk about even though that it's a requirement for them to be spiritual, it's a requirement for them to be spiritual so that they will submit to going into the churches and doing their job in infiltrating the churches. Does that make sense to you? That's exactly what they're doing. There's a video I just watched last night and I'm just sitting there like, they're just proclaiming what they're doing. I can see right through what's going on in the whole entire world. They do it in, in all over the place. And, and... And when you are part of their secret society and they, and they conquer the world, they put you in high places, even the president of the United States of America, you know, all these different guys are by this group of people. They're leading the churches, they're, they're leading the schools, all the stuff. That is the bitter and hasty nation, but it comes from a higher, 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 way up, way up, way up. And that's the punishment coming to the people. So you don't speak evil of them. Those people are allowed to do what they're doing. The reason why they're allowed to do what they're doing is because God allows that to happen because you and I broke the Holy Covenant. Now had me and you not broke the Holy Covenant and our fathers and our father's fathers and our father's father's fathers, then God's hand would be with us. But now it's against us. But he's saying, if you repent, I will keep you safe through this time. I will keep you protected. And I would say, even if you die, he's still keeping you protected because you're, you, he will give you a little strength, it says, and help you even through the toughest times. But right now, we're going to be starting to see the punishment. And if you go to the death, which it says the fifth seal, the fifth seal, that means that the, the, the righteous are going to get killed, so therefore they're going to hear the Gospels will repent, but they're still going to get killed, and then they're, they're going to go under the altar, and God's going to give them white robes and tell them to wait a little season until everybody who is appointed to die, dies, okay? And then, at the end, when the resurrection takes place, you guys who go through the fifth seal and die will be resurrected with a white gown, you're given those white gowns and you, and then it'll be all over and the Lord will reign. Now there's other people appointed to go through it and make it to the promised land and go and preach the gospel to the places where this wicked nation did not preach the truth. They preached their lies to the four corners of the earth. And that's why the two witnesses get raised up. They go preach the gospel. They're raining fire down on the earth and then they get killed in the end. And then they no longer go out. Now they're in the kingdom. And they have a, they have a very, um, and they are going to be at the right hand, of, at right hand and left hand of God. That's what they're going to do. That's in Zechariah chapter 4. That's in the book of Revelation. Now whether it's two people or 24 people or 144,000 people, that's left to be discovered. I don't fully know that yet. I'm waiting for those answers. And maybe I'll never have those answers until it happens. 
and then I'll know. However, yeah, Ezekiel 37. But look at the, 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 the watchman, Ezekiel, son of man, put, the Lord puts Judah in his hand and Israel in his hand and brings them together. Isn't that interesting? So, but God's hand's going to be in this the whole time. It's God's doing. It's the way his plan's going to go. And the people don't uh, really listen to the word of God. And so, go read, uh, those of you who are interested, go read Isaiah 54. And you tell me what it says to you about what's even going on right now. Isaiah is just absolutely loaded. The Lord's putting me in that book a lot. And, you know, and it's, and it's, it, there's a reason why he even says to the watchman, don't be afraid, you know. That's what's going on. And things are going to get uglier and uglier and uglier. I guarantee you that every, every person better go and pay attention to what these watchmen, gonna, they're going to rise up in the last days. They're not going to shut their mouth until New Jerusalem is a praise in all the earth. And you're not going to hear that in church, okay? But there's prophecy about them everywhere. There's prophecy in Daniel 11 and 12 about them. Ezekiel 3, 4, 33, 34. Look at how they're tied in with the Ezekiel vision and the archangels. Look at, look at that. Those archangels are tied in with these watchmen that rise up. And that has everything to do with the 144,000. So you guys might be the 144,000. If you guys overcome, if you have the key of David, he keeps you from the hour of temptation. Do you know that the hour of temptation was brought up to me and I, and I wanted to look into it more? When you look at what the hour of temptation was, it's actually the exodus. They, keep, they are kept from the exodus going through it. There's going to be weeping and, and, and tears there and God ends up wiping them all away. There's going to be a lot of people purged out of that, purged out of the, out of the second exodus. They're going to die, that means. They're going to be like Korah, all right? Why do we have to listen to Moses, right? You see, God doesn't, when God raises up servants and he's going to do it again, and they're going to lead even through the exodus. You know, the same as, as the first exodus. It's those who hate covetousness. In order to hate covetousness, you got to see the impact it has on people's souls. The whole reason why people will not warn other people is because they're even coveting their own life. Instead of losing it for others' sake, they covet their own life because covetousness is just ingrained right in them. It's all about themselves. They may come so far and get rid of certain things, but they're not willing to go the full distance, but they will speak evil of those who do go the full distance, probably because it makes them feel guilty, you know, which is not a good, not a good decision. Not a good decision. That's how come, that's how come they lead through the wilderness. And you know what? When you analyze this and you think about all the people that are homeless right now on the streets, they're the ones that could walk through the wilderness and not have a problem. But the guy that has a million dollars in the bank, he's going to have a lot of problems, you know, and he's not going to want to listen to those who are authoritative over him. It's the way it's going to go. And that's how people are going to get purged. That's how people, there's, there, everybody's going to be, because everybody's so used to being in their little comfort zone that they're not going to be willing to share with each other. There's not going to be toilet paper in the second exodus. You think about that. And that's how, how we've become because of the damn Christmas tree. Because of the damn Christmas tree, it has damned us to be full of covetousness and selfishness to the point where we're not even willing to spread the gospel. Now, some of you, you just, listen, it's a cleansing process, but it's still the truth. It's still the truth. So when you start, you keep going and keep confessing your sins because he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins if you confess them and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So if you got covetousness in your life, <clears throat> Get it out, you know, and ask him for help 
and he'll help you. Cheers. So, that's why people's ears get tickled so easily because they rather hear the nice things. It makes them feel good about their, 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 their they're so wanting comforts and comfort and comfort in a, in a wrong way, in their own ways. That's it. That's the point. They want to be comforted in their own ways rather than in the ways of God. And the ways of God is that his Holy Spirit dwells with you and teaches you these things. But we're not living in a time right now like it would have been years and years and years ago. Say we were following the covenant right now but or, or back at 200 years ago, you would be just delighted. You would, you would see this truth too. You'd be praying for the people 200 years from later because and asking for the, the that god would pour his you'd be on page with him you'd say the lord or you would pray um um the lord's prayer and mean it may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and you would say give them their daily bread show them their your word you would know what's going to happen in the in the future and you'd be praying for them that's why the prophets prayed for us in this generation and they did because it's going to be a struggle and people have to be united as well. But not united in a lie, united in the truth. That's the point. That's the point. People, that's why I said somebody commented the other, um, last, last night, I guess, and said, man, I got to read my Bible. I got to start studying. Yes, y'all do. Because you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see what I'm talking about. You'll start reading it more and more. And then you'll start to see how the Holy Spirit works. When the Holy Spirit will prick your heart, something will jump out of the pages. Then you're going to read another prophet and he's going to say the same thing in a different way and you're going to put the two pieces together and now you have part of the puzzle and it keeps going like that. And he gives you the meat in due season just like he promised. That's why I'm, I'm an example. That's what he's doing. He didn't tell me, he didn't say to me, Mark, will you be a watchman for me? Then I agreed to do it and then he downloaded everything right off the get-go no, he showed me that I have to enter into the work of the prophets and reap what they sow. He makes me go through the exact same thing. I'm pra I practice what I preach. And it's your proof right in front of you. I'm just a man. I'm a man trusting God, showing the world how to trust God and get, in, get their butts into the word and start telling people. And the more you do the work for God, which is what I'm doing right now, the more he will reveal to you. Then you're going to realize it's not comfortable, but you still press through it and do it anyways because you love the people so much that you're going to tell them the warnings that they need to hear so they can repent and be saved. That's why Christ died on the cross, so that we could have the spirit of grace and truth. That's why he did it. Read the lost, the removed books. Yes, read them. Not all of them are accurate or true, neither is our Bible accurate and true in the sense they've changed many words, but you can see right through it because God's word is so preserved. It even shows you when the lying pen of the scribe is in there. That's why you're supposed to have two or three witnesses. You guys <coughs> trust him. His word is alive. That's how, that's how you can see, you know, like that. This is the, here's an example. You're going to have Leviticus uh, 23 tell you that you must do the feast forever, okay? Because the context is, is he's telling you, obey me forever and you will stay in your inheritance forever and you will do the feast forever in your inheritance. But in Deuteronomy, which is the second instruction, it's you guys are not going to obey me. You're going to get booted out and therefore you are not to do the feast until you return. That's the full instruction of God, but there's people that are not listening to the full instruction of God. They get to a certain point and they will not go the distance. Then they end up putting up unnecessary things that God says that I'm going to do these things and restore them in the end. And they put stumbling blocks in front of other people. That's why I also have to warn about that to people as well. That's how deep I can see the word of God. And I prove it. Just read it. Deuteronomy 12, Deuteronomy 16, Isaiah 43, Colossians 2, Romans 14, and then it and the cherry on top is 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 Luke Luke 16. There's a guy or guys or people that are going to be wiser even than the children of light in that generation and they're telling you quickly write a check for half. That's what you should be seeing. 
They were unjust with their inheritance. So write to check for half. The inheritance was what I just said. We got kicked out. And now we're not to do the feast until we enter into the land and receive our inheritance where God puts his name in the city that he appointed. If we do them without his name being there, they're, they're just an abomination to him. Go and look what uh, even um, um, Isaiah chapter 1 and 66 both tell you the same thing. They are in agreement with what I'm saying. But it's just what the word of God is saying, not what Mark is saying. That's the incredible thing. That's what people, they get the wagon ahead of the horse. It's called the great transgression of presumptuousness. It's in the Psalms. Keep your servant from, from um, presumptuous sins. It's a great transgression. That's casting a stumbling block before the people. Because he, God already knows we're, but man is flesh and that we have gone very astray. And he's saying that I made it very easy for my people if they obey me in faith. Well, faith means that you listen to the full instruction of God and then you go and tell the people, I sanctify them in your word. Your word is truth and those who hear by your words. I'm telling you, that's what it says, John 17. And he doesn't pray for the world, he prays for them. That's why I teach the key of David. How did I get the key of David? Because he, he saw me uh, worthy of it. That's the only thing. I don't think I'm worthy of it, but he did. He showed me. So what he gives me, I give to others. That's what, that, do you not remember that says that in the Bible? What I, what's freely be given, given to you, freely give to others. It's a major thing, the key of David. It's a major thing. Even the pastors in some of these churches know it's a major thing, but they think they have it because they think the key of David is teaching their own doctrine. That's how foolish they are. And the key of David is not that. The key of David is, is to those who preach the truth and who do what the word of God says and it's given to them and it's given to them to build their confidence in what they're doing. That's why it's given to them. And they see it and it blows their mind when they receive it and it still blows their mind long after. And that's why I give it to others because if you can go and study it all out and see it, Get your butt to work because back to what I was saying about these evil servants that fall, they saw the key of David too. But now they're actually out there saying, oh, there's more to it than that. That's not the key of David. Because why? What was given to them got taken away. What they thought they had, they no longer receive. Do you see how powerful God is? Now they no longer even, even see it anymore because their pride supersedes what God's will was for them in his life to, to do these things. The key of David is Isaiah 22, 22, and it's mentioned in, well, Yeshua taught it in Matthew 12, Matthew 18, I think it is, or 19. And he's telling you to go, there's a message. Go learn what this means. Yep. Go learn what it means. And if people actually listen to the Messiah and go and learn what it means, and if... And what is it? I prefer mercy, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. What is burnt offerings? Doing the feasts even. Well, I'd rather have the key of David than to disobey and go and start doing the feasts on a wrong calendar and a wrong date, knowing that God expects perfection and he expects us to listen that we are not going to be perfected in these areas until the kingdom is restored the restoration so when you're when you have enough ears to hear these things then you proclaim them to your brothers and sisters that'll be listening and it's going to be a few people and you and a and a fool wouldn't go and study what i'm saying and just take my word for it that's why i give you the scriptures for these things and I do videos about them and I talk about them. There's a, I, I just reminded everybody about the key of David and did stuff. I don't know if I did it on YouTube or on a Zoom, but I think it might have. No, it was here on YouTube, wasn't it? But if you guys want to be part of that Zoom, then leave a comment in one of my videos and I'll, I'll figure out some way. I don't, I'll look at my description and see if my email is there and then you can email me um, you can, e if you want to talk to me personally, then you can email me and, and, uh, email your phone number to me and then I'll call you because 
I can call you for free. I set my phone plan up for that years ago because I knew what I was going to be doing. If you want to uh, be part of the Zoom call, I'll, and and you, if you're not a brother or sister, you'll get booted right out right away. But if you're a brother or sister, then then um, then um, then you're welcome to 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 join that. But there's also um, brother Isaiah. Uh, is on Twitter and he does a Sabbath gathering there and his you can you can get in contact with him looking at his video that I have on my channel about the day beginning at dawn which is another Babylonian lie from the Chaldeans and uh, and uh, you can join that on Twitter if you're if you want he's he's uh, he's teaching there he's I've, I've been with him for at least a year, one-on-one -on -one with him, and he's grown uh, exponentially. And he, uh, he's a good man. He's a very good man. And uh, he sees a lot of things now. So he teaches. Um, he shows you how he makes connecting verses. He shows you how to read scripture line upon line by his own behavior and actions. And he's entered into the work of the prophets. And together he will rejoice with 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 the prophets he, will, he if you prophesy in a prophet's name you will in no wise lose your reward so when you let people know what jeremiah 30 31 is talking about you will receive the same reward when you start to see these things capitalize if i can use that word on god's promises he wants you to do that that's your faith increasing that's what he requires of us there was a time long ago there was one of the wolves or whatever one of the evil servants we'll call them who, who made a video, and he, he's a mushy-gushy teacher. I don't talk about him very much anymore, but he's one of these guys that's fooled by this doctrine of not rebuking, all right? Instead of coming to the truth and taking all the scriptures and putting it together to see what we're, our behavior is supposed to even be like and to see what the Word of God says, he'll just cherry-pick scriptures himself, although he's, he, 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 taught, he so called teaches the Torah, but he really doesn't. Because he's not, he only teaches what, the, what he thinks he's learned. But he has stopped his ears from hearing himself. But what was I saying again? About, oh, he was, in one of his videos, he shamed people for, for even wanting the promises of God. And I'm like, man, what are you doing? It's the exact opposite. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's the exact opposite. Because when you really know the word of God, it is not fun, okay? It is not fun. There's nothing fun about it. But those promises that he gives you anyways help you. That's the joy. That's the joy of the Lord. At least in my case. I can't be comforted. And the Bible tells you I can't be. Because I know too much. And it hurts. I don't want people to die. He put a burden for souls on me that I could never explain to people because they're not like that. But the joy I have is that he would, sh he would show me all and forgive me. That is the thing. I've done a lot of sin in my life. He showed me that and he t explained to me even why I did. You know, he, he didn't give me excuses. He gave me the, the reason why things go the wrong direction when his people disobey him. And it's their responsibility. And because they don't take a accountability for what they had part in in disobeying the commandments, they don't realize everybody's spiritually connected and they contributed to all this sin and they have no shame for it still. Even though they've come to a place of repentance, they're not taking it as seriously as they should. Otherwise, they would be doing the work. Because they're so accustomed in this world, oh, just forgive yourself. It's God that forgives. Your, your, your attitude is reflected on, and you should have the joy of knowing he's forgiven you, but you should also be paying it forward what you've been, what you've been taught because you did, you did these transgressions. That's why Paul was walking around saying, oh, what a treacherous sinner I am. Oh, what a wretched man I am. That's why he was talking like that. That was an example. That's why he would say, we've all walked in this, 
in the, in the, in the ways of darkness, but, but in times past, he's letting, you know, we all did it. He's encouraging you, but he's not letting himself off the hook. You know, he's not sitting there. Oh, I'm holier than thou now. And that's the way the church is. That even though they, they just, they, they claim it on, on the cross that Jesus died for all their sins and they can just walk around doing whatever they want now because they just have to be gentle and nice and not rebuke their neighbor or say anything. And that's a sign of their salvation. And that's not, that's a sign of their destruction coming. That's a sign of their destruction coming. The, the people will say, they'll use like Matthew 19 and they'll say, see, you're supposed to just take your brother aside and rebuke him privately. That's if he sins against you. That's if you take my lawnmower and don't return it. I'm not going to put you on blast on YouTube. I'm going to tell you, you sinned. Return my lawnmower. I need it. My, my grass is like overgrown now and it's going to take me forever. Don't take things from me and not return them. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. I'll cut your lawn for you. That is a sign of repentance. Okay, in a little while. That is going to take my daughter out today. Get out of this house. So that's a sign of repentance. The people you do not pray for is the people doing idolatry. But the, what the point is, is that you don't pray for them. He won't even hear you praying for them. You go and rebuke them. All right? Those who sin rebuke before everyone. That doesn't mean you hate them. That means you love them. But the whole, the whole church twisted the gospel the exact opposite way. You don't pray for people who are sinning thinking that, oh, God's just going to wake them up. No. You go and rebuke them and you show them what he's shown you. But I mean, it's, there's certain people out there in the last days that are going to wake up. They're going to, they get chastised. That's what happens. I got chastised big time. I came to a place where I fell on my face knowing that, there, that I'm just, I'm going to hell. There's no way I'm not going to hell. I'm going to hell. You know, I, because I, I couldn't even understand anything in the word of God. I knew I was in great sin. You know, I was just getting worse and worse and worse. It's getting worse and worse. And I just came to the place because, you know, I, I just, it was terrible. I was getting chastised. So I asked for the truth. It was the best thing I ever did. And he spoke to me. So, and then the, the, the rest of it is, is what, what, what happens to you, you pay it forward. What, what, what he's done for you, what he whispers in your ear, what he tells you in darkness, you proclaim it in light. You know, these, this is what this all means. We have a job to do, and that's to go wake up other people. So in my position, I tell you guys to do the same thing I'm doing so that the, the tree has lots of fruit. Some a hundredfold, some 60-fold, some 30-fold. It tells you that the, the knowledge of God is the fruit. But the, that's in itself telling you that you're going to rebuke people and produce those, those people's repentance. And that's the fruit. Because that's what the word of God says. That's the knowledge of God. That's showing mercy, you guys. When we show mercy, we're showing them to repent. That's how we show. You're not going to receive mercy if you don't repent. That's the point. That's how you show mercy. God's ways are higher. I told you already, if you want to see some things written about the end day servants, go read Isaiah 54. And then flip the page to 55 and listen to what God's saying there. Then flip it to 66 and see what God is saying there. And just keep going on. But you might as well start from the beginning of the book. Because it's continually telling you over and over and over again what he's going to do even in the last days, the whole book. It's, I got to get into that book more and more and more. It's, it's, there's endless information in there and it's, it continually is talking to me. That's why I can even see what's going on. And it's not just that. It's the same thing my brothers and sisters will share with me, not even knowing what they're sending me relates to what I'm learning here in the Bible. At the same time, there's, that's how God works. And he shows you how he works through your brothers and sisters. And then you let them know God is working through you. Uh, the other day, a sister and a brother were both talking about something in, in places uh, I never recognized myself. Again, confirming the key of David. 
Paul talking about it. I can't remember where they are, but it just the way it went. I mean, it, and I was in a in a place of uh, Gracie. Let the dog back in, please. Um, and I was in a place of sorrow, and it really encouraged me. So their words actually encouraged what I was going through. So you guys got to read your Bible. You stay into it. The, the brothers and sisters that I have that may or may not be listening here that I'm more may that have my phone number and I talk to, they learn. They see this stuff. They're growing. They, I get to witness it. I get to see the fruits of what I was told to do. I see because I obeyed, I get to see them growing. And that's, that's what brings joy to my heart. You know, that's why the apostles were so happy what was happening with the Gentiles. And they reported back to Jerusalem at the council of Jerusalem, telling all these wonderful things that are happening to the Gentiles. Cause that's all they cared about. That's all they cared about. They didn't care about the ways of this world anymore. They want nothing to do with it. I don't want nothing to do with it. If I had my way, I'd just sit at home all the time and study the Bible. I have the opportunity in my unique lifestyle to sit at home all winter because I work road construction. But, you know, I have to trust in the, the, in the Lord that he'll provide for me. And that's what I do. That's been I've been doing it for like coming on eight years now or whatever it's been. And it's very... It's a faith builder, you know? It's a faith builder. It's very interesting what he does. So, anyways. I guess I can leave it at that. That's all I got to say. And, uh, and please do the work. But be warned about what's even going on. My email is, is it, I'm sure it's in the description on this. If I go, I'm not going to go chase around everybody's email that want to ask me questions, you know, like I got so many people I already talked to. My phone is filled with people to talk to. So, you know, if somebody wants to reach out, then I'll get back to you and I'll call you. Just leave me your phone number. I'll call you if you want to talk. If you have questions that you, you have personally, or you want me to explain something, it's a lot easier. Um, it's a lot easier to answer. Like I speak generally I have no idea who everybody is, you know? So I speak generally only about what the word of God says and what I see thousands and thousands of people doing, right? It, because the Bible is, a, is tattletailing on the world. It tells you who each and everybody, everybody is, you know? And so I can't, I can't keep up with people. It's not even my job. I'm not a babysitter. I proclaim the sword's coming. I do my best to babysit, but... What I, what I do, I'm just t teaching what the word of God says and what people need to repent from, but I'll give of myself answers to personal questions if I have those answers, but I'm going to use the word of God. And, and I will try to one-on-one um, -on -one with everybody, but, but I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm sick and tired of getting into people's drama So because they're really not listening. That's why I keep pushing, read the word of God yourself. You know, I'll tell you what I'm, I'm led to tell people, but you got to read the word of God. I don't need people following me for the sake of following me. They need to follow what I'm saying because all I'm saying is what the word of God is saying and trying to teach people that you will have the wisdom and knowledge that is promised you if you do what the word of God says, which means keep your nose in that book. So specific questions. I love answering them, especially when I have a good solid answer that something confuses you, you're not going to be able to express it, especially when I don't read the comments because I can't see them very well. You know, I can't see them. I can see a little bit, but, but when I'm talking about things that I need to talk about, I'm really not concentrating on if you guys are answering me questions, except for on the Sabbath day, I'm going to try to do that uh, every Sabbath day. Um, um, I think the way my schedule will be from now on is that I'll be doing this Zoom call in the morning. I'm just not in charge of it. Brother Nathan is, and he's, he's what a blessing he is. And so he'll do the Zoom call. After the Zoom call's finished, then I'll get on, on YouTube to either preach what I'm supposed to preach that day, but then I'll also do a, an open kind of live, and at least you can... And it's it's working for some people. It's helpful to somebody, but some people and they ask them questions, and and then they uh, and then they get, I can answer them. So and that's all I can offer 
because I'm not going back on a Twitter anymore. I'm done with that. So it's just, it's a, turning into a cesspool. And then I've already, I've already done my job and I, there's very capable men that are out there doing the work and they can experience what it's like to lead themselves. So, well, no, I wouldn't cut, cut off social media. People got to hear that way. You know, I just was told to get off of there because the Lord gave me Ezekiel chapter three, verses uh, 24, 25, 26. That day I left, but I didn't know why, but he gave it to me. And I told everybody that day that it was given to me. And then I, in the end, I just ended up leaving that, that group. It's, uh, you know, you, the only way we're, it says that they're going to be scattered to the four corners of the earth. And there's only going to be very few teaching the truth. And there's only going to be quiet. I'm not done. I told you, wait. Anyways, the, um, there's only going to be few teaching the truth in the last days. I always emphasize I, uh, Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3, verses 25 to 31. It's not a joke. It's a warning that there's going to be people that have the Holy Spirit, but it's going to be about vain glory, which is very much what I'm against. Vain glory and covetousness. All that stuff is what I preach against all the time. But it says that's the, what these servants are going to go to their vain glory and their covetousness and the with, Holy Spirit's going to withdraw from them. And you're going to see that the behavior of them will be apparent to some people anyways. So you should know that this is going to happen in prophecy. That means if it were possible, I'm going to start heaping to myself people to worship me. Okay? That's possible. The Bible says it's possible, but because I'm aware of it and hate it, I don't want nothing to do with that. And I always ask, may that not happen to me? I'm in God's hands. And because you're, you make yourself aware of it and you, and you want nothing to do with betraying what God has done to wake you up from the beginning by his spirit of grace and truth. You have to have a behavior and an attitude like that. You have to trust the word of God. It's your faith. So your faith is, see, what happened to a lot of the brothers is that they, it went to their head, okay? I'll testify of this. There was one guy that I woke up and I spent a lot of time with him. And he got, gets on the, uh, uh, while well, he's texting with me or talking on the phone, I don't even remember how it went down anymore. And he said to me that God told him that he is the Joshua that's going to lead the 144,000 into the promised land. Out of his own mouth said that to me and I was seeing signs of his covetousness before and I end up rebuking him the man wouldn't do lift a finger to help the people he was given a boatload of knowledge and now nothing wise is coming out of his mouth at all and all he can do is talk evil against me because he's obsessed with me you see and that is exactly the warning I warned him I told the, the Holy Spirit told me to tell that man to get to work I did what I was told, and he rebelled against me. Well, he didn't rebel against me. He rebelled against the Holy Spirit. And the, then the fall of him was very apparent right in front of everybody to see. And it should have shown a lot of people that the word of God is true. So that is, a, and I had to go through that test myself. Do I obey God or do I be a coward and not say anything to this guy? No, I had to obey God and I lost my best friend. I lost my best friend putting me to the test. Will you obey? Everybody has to understand that God following the Messiah has to be more important than your own children, your wife, your husband, everything. When he's showing you things, you know, it doesn't mean that you go leave people because you, because you aren't happy with them because they're not keeping the Ten Commandments or something like that. It means that if the Lord is showing you things and it's in the Word of God and don't believe every spirit, when He's telling you what the Bible says, like in my case, it's time to get to work and He doesn't want to listen and He starts swearing, He even threatened, he even threatened me physically when I said that to Him. And then... Then you start seeing a whole bunch of stuff. Busy bodies that don't know what they're talking about, have no idea about the details, opening their mouth when they shouldn't. Lots of stuff. You see lots of stuff about pe people really are not sanctified in the word of God. They're not listening. They're not paying attention. They're not even seeing what Messiah prophesied would even happen. 
they can't accept it because they want ear tickling words. So they, they got, and that includes me. It's hard to take, it's hard to see when these things are happening, but they're gonna happen. And it's putting everybody to the test. Listen, we all broke the Holy Covenant in all of our nations. This is not supposed to be a time of, of happiness, okay? It isn't a time of happiness. It's a time of remorse and lament. And then when people, <coughs> people get afraid of what, real, what the truth really is, then they start going back to their old ways instead of doing the work. Instead of paying it forward, what God did for them, they start going backwards the wrong direction and then the Holy Spirit withdraws from them and then they're just operating back on the Antichrist spirit of error. Then they were warned about it, but they don't listen to the warnings about falling. You know? The, the warnings of, of people falling is because people won't do the work. That's why. Basically, look at God saying this. I have given you all these things to wake you up. And now you're going back to your own understanding again. And you're not fulfilling the royal law. You were called to be first fruits. But you're showing yourself to be fruitless. That's the point. That's what God is saying. That's why he's not. That's why many are called and few are cho chosen, you guys. Now, I just pray that these men and women who, who go in that direction and they fulfill those terrible prophecies about themselves, I still pray that they're forgiven. I forgive them. There's a lot of nasty people out there that go against me on Twitter. That's not why I left. I, I'm not intimidated by people at all. The reason why I left is because the word of God told me to. So I left. So anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. Hopefully you guys dig into the word. My kid won't leave me alone. Okay, bye-bye.